So good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and good evening. Here I'm in Geneva. I am Professor Francesco Derchi, and today on behalf of the University of Business International Studies, I am uh, giving you the welcome, welcome to Geneva, ready to talk about uh, the topic of the day, challenger brands. So here I am in Geneva in uh, coronavirus times. We are dealing everything on, uh, on a distance uh, way. So I'm here in my studio, but now let me just share, share with you my desktop so we can start working together. So, okay. So here I am. Let's start uh, now talking a little bit about myself very quickly. I'm a visiting lecturer at uh, Colo Terrier de Lausanne and I'm lecturing uh, at the University of Business International Studies. Uh, I've been recently publishing a book called The Digital Skills. And the topic we're talking about today is a very hot topic. It's about the challenger brands. So when we talk about challenger brands, we're talking about a very specific kind of brands that are, we can say, focused on uh, uh, something very particular that is uh, emerging from the kind of uh, 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 market uh, scenario, market conditions that, that we are seeing right now. So before talking about the market conditions and getting into the topic of challenger brand, we need to uh, get going uh, uh, our, uh, our thinking, our mind about what is a brand. So the word brand comes from very long time. And actually, as you can see in the photo, brand means to, 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 to pretend that uh, something is our, our own. It, 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 it's a bit like when, when, when cowboys were putting signs and elements on their, on their cows, on their animals, in order to show the world that no matter the cow was, could be found, if they would have escaped, uh, the owner of the cow was uh, clearly uh, impressed in the skin of the cow. Uh, back to the business, back to business times, back to, 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 to today's, uh, David Acker, one of the godfather of, of marketing, uh, defined brand in, as, as a triangle of a, uh, of, of a composition of three different elements. Uh, as you can see in this triangle, you have on the, on, the, on the left side of yours, the sign, the name, the logos, and the chosen symbols that we all give to, uh, um, to, to a specific product. And that is part of the brand. But at the same time, brand is also, it's also the product per se, or the physical object of transaction. So let's assume that you are buying an ice cream. Uh, you are buying a, a, an ice cream from a certain company. That company has given a name to that ice cream. And part of the brand is surely the performance of the ice cream, how the ice cream is compared to your expectation of it. And uh, in, the, in the model from David Acker, we have a third element. The third element is what Acker defined as the most important one. It was the promise, the value and the benefit proposition that we have every time we chose to buy a certain product. So as a composition of three things, uh, the, the, the golden rule about it is that every piece of this triangle must play its part in order to, to, to have a brand that performs well. So what David Acker also say that is very important is that the brand for us is a long-term contract. What does it mean? It means that every time we decide to buy, uh, the brand is giving us a promise. And uh, by choosing the brand, by buying the brand, we are accepting this promise and we are endorsing this promise. So the contract is, that happens is implicit, is implicit with the purchase, but is the market that defer, determines its validity, which means that every time we, 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 we keep on buying, we, keep, we renew this contract. Well, when we decide to quit, well, at that point, the contract doesn't work anymore. Uh, a lot of times uh, when we talk about brands, we, we, we tend to, to give too much importance of the first part, the one that we discussed before, the visual aspect. Well, the visual aspect is very important, but when we talk about brands, we, we need to take into account that somehow the visual aspect accounts just for the 10% of the total. So the 90% of our brand is uh, not visual related to performance, as we said, related to, se to service, so all the sales and technical support, et cetera, et cetera. 
Now, in order to get a, a clear definition from David Acker, we have the real definition from uh, the, 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 the real definition of brand, we have a set of assets or liabilities that are linked to a brand's name and symbol that adds or subtract the value provided by a product or a service. So an asset or a set of assets linked to a brand name and symbol, the visual part, and the value provided. Another very important uh, uh, godfather of branding, Kevin Kelly, uh, Keller uh, get to get even more specific about, about the role of brand. Brands are means to create awareness and image for products and services and anything that comes to mind, people, places, etc. So basically, Professor Keller uh, associates the concept of brand with the concept of knowledge, as if brands uh, becomes a, a, an instrument, a tool that we use to associate and create knowledge about a, a certain specific thing. The discipline of brands has evolved with the idea of create differentiation and distinctiveness. The reason for which we talk about being different and being distinctive is the, 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 the constant struggle that every company must do in order to avoid what is uh, commonly called the commodity trap. Uh, what is the commodity trap? Is the, 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 the trap that, that, that has the, the risk to bring a certain product or a service into just simply a diversification of price, which means a price competition, or that could also call the price war. In the price war, there is no company that wins. That's why brands are very important elements to create a differentiation and being perceived as distinctive. Another big word from one of the biggest um, uni, um, brands management uh, companies, which is Unilever, we create brands. This is Naya Fijeller, the former chairman. We create brands in our head because we need to make choices. Brands allow us to return safely to what we have been tried and we have liked and never make the same mistake twice. People create brands because they are useful. So from a, a bit more theoretical to a very concrete definition, brands are useful. They allow us to return safely to what we have tried and liked. So this implicitly uh, accept the fact that uh, when we buy things, there is a risk. There is a set of risks that we're pointing in place. Maybe it's a financial risk about the, how the product could be too expensive or uh, what if the product uh, is not performing enough or a, a risk perceived about the performance of the product. In general, when we're talking about the brand, we have to always consider, after all the definitions that we have seen, that we have three elements, the rational part of the brand, the emotional part of the brand, and the user's part. What is this user part? Well, if we assume that the markets are places where things are evolving, if we assume that now with the digital world, markets are places where conversation are happening, uh, think about social media, think about people uh, posting and promoting and discussing about brands. Well, at that point, we consider that for every brand that is happening, there is also a conversation about it. And that is the user part. In, indeed, right now, the part uh, of conversation related to a brand is so important that is somehow a third uh, um, leg of a tool, a stool. So in this tool, we have three legs, the rational part, the the emotional part, which is the promise and the values that we said about it, the intangibility and the user part. All three of them, they must perform. And this is very interesting. All of three of them must be managed in a way in order to have the stool working as we want it to be. Just to leave you with the last definition to, before getting into the topic of the day, uh, brands must follow the rule of the four leverages. Well, which means that at the same time, brand must be credible credible for the users and for the stakeholders in general. It must be sustainable, both from a financial perspective and from a very uh, um, environmental pers uh, perspective right now. It must be relevant, it must be relevant for the users that are choosing it and must be different as well, because uh, difference is very important how to be distinguished from the market. So when we talk about these four elements together, we can also find a cases in the in the history of the world where uh, these four elements has, has failed through time. 
this failure has led the brand to, to, to dilute, to lose its power, to lose its what is called equity, its value through time. We have cases of Segway. Segway has been has been has been two very interesting, but it's never been sufficiently relevant sufficiently relevant. It's very different, but it's not sufficiently relevant. Commodore Amiga. Commodore Amiga has been the PC before the PC, the, the, the operative system that everyone was using before the, the, the growth of PCs. Credibility. Uh, here I, I'm talking about the case of British Petroleum when they had this enormous uh, uh, scandal in the in the Mexican Gulf uh, related to spillover due to lack of maintenance in one of the drilling uh, plants that they had in the Mex Gulf Mexican. And then when you talk about sustainability, we have plenty of cases nowadays. Uh, one of them is clearly when Pan Am fails, which was a great scandal, big scandal for the whole uh, um, American aviation and, and global aviation history in general. So once we have set the, 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 the foundations for the discussion about the brand, I think we can get into the topic of, uh, um, well, let, let, let's get now in, into the topic of the evolution. What are the challenges uh, that are happening to brands? Well, there are majorly two big challenges. The first challenge is what we call the globalization. We all know what it means. It means that now the world is very close. Every country, every person in the world is very close one another. And the second element is digitization. And digitization has been seen as an accelerator of globalization as much as globalization has been an accelerator to digitization. So we can say that all these two leverages has been pushing and helping each other uh, in the creation of some new entities, which we call corporation brands, which are also considered as global brands. So what is happening right now is that there are new ways of seeing markets. And these ways of seeing markets from a brand perspective are, is, are basically uh, building around the, the, the idea of uh, creating brands that are big, uh, strong, and efficient enough to get into the market somehow everywhere in the same way. And this is influencing markets. And these brands are so strong, they're able to influence culture, able to influence purchasers every time at the, in the, at the same way in multiple different markets. No matter the market, those global brands are able to achieve their business performance. So this is creating clearly a, a big question no? in such a big environment in such a connected world is there space for smaller brands uh, 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 that would be a, a great um, a great question to to deepen and uh, normally in my classes i i have uh, um, i i balance uh, moments with uh, one to like one, one to many teaching with moments of, of discussion and, and and this could be a great question for, for, a, for, a, for a great discussion where students could start now digging into some research, having like 10, 15 minutes for, for research before coming to class and discussing. So th that is the kind of, of, of teaching that we always do uh, at the uh, uh, University of Business International Studies. We have this kind of uh, interactive way of, of teaching and, and learning that is very helpful. So now let, 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 let's go back to the question. Is there space for smaller brands? Well, uh, Adam Morgan wrote a book, which is the topic of today's. The book of today, uh, the, the, the topic of today, the book is called uh, uh, Eating the Big Fish. Well, in this book, he defines the concept of challenger brand. And he has been observing uh, over 80 different cases of companies that have been succeeding in the last years. And uh, these companies have uh, some elements in common that we're going to see together today. First is a state of the marketplace. The marketplace that we have started uh, describing now, we're gonna see a little bit in detail. The second is that these brands has been achieving a rapid growth. And the third, which is very interesting, is the state of mind. So what is the mindset of these companies that have been able to succeed no matter the, the size and the dimension of these big giants? So let's get, let's get going with the first concept. The first concept is the concept of the state of the marketplace. How is the state of the marketplace nowadays? We call it the VUCA world. Actually, this topic of VUCA has been, uh, has been, uh, uh, has been around for a while in the business world. These are three, element, th three um, examples of, of articles from the Harvard Business Review, 
about uh, VUCA. VUCA is an acronym. It's an acronym that stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And those are the four attributes that we are using a lot to describe the situation of the market right now. And, and these markets that are VUCA are completely unpredictable because they're volatile, they change so much, they are uncertain. It's very difficult to make a, a, a forecast that could really happen. It's complex because uh, there is not one single or, or, or two specific leverages that are, that, are, um, that are needed in order to make the, the scenario change. There are multi leverages, uh, all interconnected. And then it's ambiguous, which means that the same situation could be seen at the same time as an opportunity and a threat. Uh, I don't want to, to mention too many examples, but the, 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 this coronavirus COVID-19 uh, case is a typical case of ambiguity. We have a situation of extreme problematics, problematicism, as well as enormous potential for many companies in terms of business. So this uh, situation of VUCA creates a new marketplace. Okay, now I have a video for you. I'm going to try to to see how to uh, get into this video um, to describe how the market is. Uh, let me see. Can you see it? Yes, we can see. That it's operating in the long heralded friction free economy. And that changes everything because that is a world in which labor and information and money move around easily, cheaply, and almost instantly. And as a result, companies now have completely new relationships with almost everyone they deal with certainly with their employees with their customers with their owners they don't need to own as many assets they don't need to employ as many people so for example uber is the world's largest Hi, Mr. Berkey. We cannot see yes it. we hear it but we cannot see it hey I, that's why i asked you before Let me see now. Is the largest disseminator of news Is it better now? In the world. Yeah, we can see it now. Perfect. All of this is possible today. Can you turn on the voice a little? You can lose the idea of information. Uh, I don't know. And the money. It's a top. So and so Create this fundamental new value creating. Business. Okay, this is good. Is it better? Yeah. The 21st century corporation actually faces a tougher life than the 20th century corporation did. Because in a friction-free economy, there is no protection. You're competing against everyone and everything out there who might come up with a better idea than yours. The good news for companies is that you don't need all that physical capital that you used to need. The fact is, everybody has access to the 21st century's most valuable assets, which are openness to new ideas, engineering, and connection. Okay. So what is happening now? Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. What is happening right now? It's happening that in this state of the marketplace, we have things that are, have been uh, quite uh, uh, unexpected. We have uh, companies that are no physically charged by assets. They're still performing as if they were. So we see that there are moving uh, new enormous possibilities that could be tackled from uh, companies that are smart enough to understand how markets are evolving. This is happening for Airbnb, the world assets accommodation provider that has no real estate. It is happening for Facebook, 
which is the most popular media owner that creates no content. Facebook has been establishing himself uh, for only 25 years. In 25 years, not even 20 years, Facebook established himself as the second or maybe the, the first state in the world in terms of a number of users. And this is the same for Alibaba, for Amazon. We have, we have this kind of, of phenomenon. A second element that is also very important to understand where these brands are operating is the, the possibility, thanks to digitization and globalization, to achieve a rapid growth. This growth sometimes, oftentimes, we can even consider to be exponential growth, which means growing the same amount, the same number every year. Uh, this, is, this has happened to Apple in a specific period of time. That's why we're going to talk about Apple now. It's, it is happening to Airbnb and is happening to, to Tesla, uh, which means that digitization is not only a a, a, a ch an element for helping enormous brands to become even bigger, but is also an enabler for smaller brands that are uh, understanding the tools and the techniques to, to, to achieve the growth that digital is could allow them to do. And the third element that we need to, to focus on is this uh, uh, state of mind. So uh, Adam Morgan clearly state that the greatest danger facing a brand today is not rejection, but is indifference. What does it mean? It means most brands that we see around are not really marketing, but they're very, they're merely tweaking indifference. What does it mean? It means that people do not react to marketing stimulus because marketing stimulus are not strong enough, are not interesting enough. So people not only uh, do not buy, but they are completely indifferent to all these companies. The difference that is happening with the challenger brands is that challenger brands, they know they do not have the time or the luxury of indifference. So they are pushing in order to become strongly preferred. This is what they, they focus on. Their only currency is strong preference. This is where um, the, the mindset of the challenger brands is focused, to create a strong preference. In fact, let, let's repeat it again. The greatest danger to a challenger is not rejection, it's indifference. How this indifference is tackled? For, with four specific kind of actions. First, attitude, which is called intelligent naivety. Second, strategy. Third, behavior, and fourth, sustaining momentum. So when we talk about uh, attitude, we talk about intelligence naivety, which means that uh, uh, trying to approach the category, the category of belonging into a new and fresh way. This is what Apple has been able to do through time by competing with existing computers. This is somehow the example of, uh, of uh, Barack Obama which has been leveraging messages that has never been used in politics, at least in recent politics, and uh, what the vitamin water has been achieving by being able to sell in a very competitive category, which is water, with a new twist and being able to achieve enormous growth by bringing fun into water. The second element related to strategy is what we call the lighthouse identity. What is a lighthouse identity? Is, a, is, a, is a, the possibility to create around the brand a preference as if the brand would be a lighthouse. What the lighthouse do normally? The, light, the lighthouse is the first um, element that you see when you're reaching land with your boat. And is also the last piece of a mankind artifact that you see when you leave land. So that's exactly what uh, a brand, a challenger brand have to do, to be anchored on a product rock. So this uh, set of product excellence and ideas are able to project the identity of the brand in every kind of activity they do, in their product, in their communication, et cetera, et cetera, in order to be recognized everywhere. Some example of it, uh, Marmite. Marmite has, super been, uh, has been very attempt in, in, in creating a, a, a campaign that has been focused on uh, protection of the, of, the, of the element of Marmite instead of not make it forgot. Uh, Club Med. Club Med has been doing it the same with the, their civilization campaign. 
by being able to to become a thought leader in the category lush lush is the is the is the soap uh, manufacturer uh, has been using always creative elements and everything for example when you buy a lush a piece of, of soap a lush they, they they comes with popcorn inside in order to bring always the fun aspect of the brand inside or apple apple is doing has been working especially when they were they, together with uh, with Steve jobs where they, Steve jobs was on board always using um, every asset every touch point every moment of uh, chance to speak with the client they've been using it to create a media tool this goes with all the shops this goes with all the touch point like all the all the phones or all the uh, uh, um, the boxes every everything related to the communication is being created as a very strong impactful asset then we need to talk about the behavior. The behavior is clearly uh, something very important. Steve Jobs has always been saying that I am proud of the things I, that we haven't done as the things we have done. So choices, this is very important. The behavior is, about, is part of the mindset. Uh, sacrifice and overcommitment. Overcommitment to what? Overcommitment to the few things that really matter. And this is a very interesting research uh, that the witness, the fact that challengers, they don't, simply deprioritize, but they also give more power to things that matter. And uh, what matters, thanks to this analysis of uh, uh, what are the, the campaign that really they're really successful, uh, prove that uh, campaigns that have been uh, focused on large profit gains are mainly, mostly campaigns that are not just putting emotional involvement in it, but also fame. And what is fame? Fame is the fact that we're using uh, a communication tool at the same time in order to get word of mouth buzz, in order to get the consumers becoming brand advocates, which means that uh, becoming people that are talking about the brand and they're talking in terms of value about the brands, which gives a brand a sense of stature and authority behind its actual size, which means that by having done a certain campaign, having done a certain marketing activity, the brand looks much bigger than what it really is. So make sure that the brand is more likely to come to mind first in every relevant context. Because at the end of the day, the challenger, the greatest danger to a challenger is not the rejection per se, but is indifference. And that is exactly what companies that are challengers are looking to do. I have here, uh, two cases for you in order to leave you with uh, some uh, real uh, stories. The first case is the case of uh, Airbnb. Uh, let me share my, 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 that is very interesting. Can you see it? My father was a god on the west side of the Berlin Wall, while another man guarded the east. Eventually, the wall came down, but even after moving away, my father carried a piece of it with him. While I grew up, it lingered over all of us, a barrier between him and the rest of the world. I decided I would help by taking him back to Berlin to show him the beautiful place it had become. When we arrived, the stranger who answered the door became familiar. The guard who patrolled the opposite side of the wall now welcomed us as a friend. After that, Things were better for my father. Airbnb. Belong anywhere. What, what, what is this story telling us? Why is it so relevant? Because here, sorry, I need to fix this. So, uh, what is this so, why is this story so relevant? Because here, we see a company that is using a story that is a real story coming from their customers who submitted the story in order to update the company 
on what is something related to an experience that they had with the brand, an experience of life that happened by using the brand. They leverage on this story to get even more audience, attention, and discussions about the brand because the content was just simply too good, too good to be let uh, go. And uh, so um, they have been using and leveraging on, the, on, the, on this uh, very strong aspect of social media. And now I want to leave you with another case. I want to leave you with another case, uh, which, uh, which is from, uh, this is the last case for today. This is, this is from uh, a company called Under Armour. I'm sure that you know guys Under Armour, some of you. It has been, uh, Under Armour has been identified as a big major challenger of Nike. And how did they chose to, to, to play? They chose to focus on uh, position, fighting Nike with, uh, with the, the weapons of the social media world. So they announced a few uh, uh, weeks before the launch of the campaign, they announced they would have used a, a star, a model star, Giselle Bunchen, as a as an actress for as a testimonial. So they decided to play a very different game than usual. They were not talking about uh, uh, um, athletes and, uh, and people that uh, are really competing at top of their game in sport. They said, we want to be perceived by people as a company that has the right mindset. They're not only for high performing athletes. So they chose Giselle. Giselle is a completely different kind of person. She's a, she's a top model, so she's very, she's very known, but she's not a, a, a sports star. And they announced this. this. And this announcement created a lot, creates a lot of, of uh, debate online. A lot of people were for her, but a lot of people uh, were against this move. They didn't like Giselle. They almost used Giselle on a hater side. They, they put her down. They, 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 they said very bad things about her. So... This is the point where um, the company Under Armour decided to leverage in order to prove how strong they became. See this piece of art. I will what I want. And they have been using all the communications and all the social media posts that has been uh, talking about uh, Giselle and about this choice to create content, especially for advertising. And by do doing that, they had so much follow-up and so much uh, engagement from the whole world of social media that this uh, advertisement gained millions of viewers, not from... Uh, uh, TV or paid media, but just from earned media, which means media is created by the users. So at this point, uh, I think uh, we have discussed about the topic of uh, challenger brands. I encourage you to come to my class. I can't wait to have you here. Uh, I hope uh, I have been able to, to, to satisfy your curiosity for the subject. I have one question here that I can answer. So what is the most important thing that we should do if we want to set a useful brand? Um, well, my, my, my answer is to understand the right mindset. Right mindset is everything. When you have the right mindset, you are able to define what are the core values, 
and you are able to define what are the organizational structure you need to put in place in order to develop. After that, you can start thinking about your marketing, but the always mindset come first. So uh, I, I look forward to see you soon here in Geneva. And uh, it might be my pleasure. Now it's my time to pass you um, the pass you the mic pass pass the microphone to my colleague Ina. Um, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Professor Derchi. I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, uh, having a webinar. Uh, I'm talking now to the Turkish candidates and uh, to our partners on the other the world. We are very happy to welcome you uh, in our webinar and uh, the topic is very uh, up to date, uh, I would say, uh, because marketing is um, all about brands and how we present them. Uh, for the future students, I want to say that it was just a great, a perfect example of uh, the way uh, we teach here in the University of Business and International Studies. And uh, what we care about, it's uh, uh, all the teaching is done in real life cases so that you can guys uh, use this uh, project that you do, business plans that you do and uh, devote to real life uh, uh, cases to real life projects, uh, startups, NGOs, uh, or enterprises that you want to create and build. Uh, I would uh, like to share with you um, the presentation about the university in case uh, you will be able to apply this or next year. Uh, we have few options for bachelor, master, and DBA students, doctorate of business administration, uh, both on campus, on ground, and online. Let me start with um, sharing my screen with you. I hope you can see um, University of Business and International Studies. Uh, the headquarters of it is in Geneva. We are Swiss uh, boutique private university with all the accreditations needed. And uh, we were found by the group of professors over 15 years ago. Um, we uh, cooperate with a lot of universities uh, abroad and also inside the country. And uh, what is our philosophy? We are trying to make all our graduates shine in the international job market. So our goal is uh, in the long term, uh, we have career department that helps our students to be involved in the internships and uh, we encourage them all to have practical experience in the real jobs so that they could have value for the market. Uh, this is our last award. Uh, I should say uh, we got uh, a award in a magazine which is called CO. Uh, for being uh, at uh, one global MBA ranking. So one of our program was uh, um, MBA that was ranked seven among 77 online programs. This is very high score if you talk about all the universities that were taking uh, part in this um, ranking. Uh, what we are offering, we are offering not only Swiss degree, we are offering Swiss uh, degree together with American. So you can receive a dual degree by passing just uh, three years of um, education. Here we are based in Geneva. And um, also uh, we can propose a Bachelor of Arts in International Relations. So uh, we have um, for a moment uh, five intakes per year, but uh, we are jumping into two intakes per year. So Basically, you will be able to start either in September or in January. This we do for mostly international students because you need uh, to have your time and open your visa before you come to study. And um, I will later on share all this database and you can also check on our website all this information in case I will be too fast <laughs> in speaking. Uh, for the master students, we offer one year and a half program so it means three semesters 
in Master of Arts in International Relations, because Geneva, you know, uh, is a headquarter of international organizations. Uh, we have here Department of United Nations and uh, also VTO, uh, other uh, departments of United Nations uh, who are working like this refugee commissions and uh, Global Fund. Uh, uh, also, we allow our students to be uh, members of uh, United Nations Library, so you are getting like annual pass and you can use all their books uh, in order to help you in study process. And our professors, they are all coming from working background, so they're working professionals and they share with you their huge, huge networking. And this uh, is uh, the information for undergraduate and graduate students. You can see on this uh, slide that we are very international. We have over 40 different nationalities on campus from different countries. And uh, of course, uh, we try to be equal in terms of gender issue. So we uh, have 60% um, of female and 40% of male students on campus. It means that, yes, we are given more power to women <laughs> in terms of business relations. And you can see we created here the very easy online application form that you can apply and upload all your documents very easily. Through this website, uh, you can check uh, and uh, upload uh, for bachelor students. The most important documents uh, are high school certificate with grades, your English proficiency test. In case you have IELTS or TOEFL, that's great. If you don't, uh, but for example, your studies were done in English, uh, we can accept you uh, if you provide us uh, the document from the institution, like some people have in high schools uh, programs in English. Uh, also, it's required uh, to have UBIS application form, application fee of uh, 100 Swiss francs. It's approximately like United States dollar. And uh, you are writing an essay of about uh, 250, 300 words. Uh, what is your motivation? Uh, what would you like to do uh, in the next uh, three to five years? If you would like to start your own business, uh, how do you see your future career? Maybe you can describe somebody who is a leader in your eyes. Uh, you choose an uh, important uh, person from around the world and you say why he motivates you and why he is a leader, in your opinion. Uh, for master students, uh, the criteria is a little bit uh, more demanding because uh, we um, need your motivation letter and CV with current information if you are doing any kind of internships, if you've been studying in universities. And we know that uh, Turkish universities are in a very good standard. So with your bachelor degree, you can basically easily apply if you have any additional documents, like you've been uh, on a scholarship program, Olympiad, sport achievements, uh, we also consider this uh, in our selection process. And we help you in uh, the beginning and all the stages uh, when you apply for a Swiss visa. Uh, so we are providing you a provisional acceptance letter document with your price offer. Uh, we can also create a financial plan for you in installments payment. And uh, you are basically needed just to have a first payment of first semester done because it's needed for embassy to give you a green light to go to the country. Uh, if you are studying online, then you are escaping this. But if you want to come on campus, this is needed to be done. We also can help you with accommodation. Uh, we provide you a letter of enrollment and uh, Geneva address that you can be uh, using as um, for future in terms of renting a room or apartment in a student's dorm residence. Uh, then uh, uh, we help you, we send you financial receipts and all these uh, visa forms. Uh, the only thing is from you needed, it's a bank statement, like how much money you might have on your account, or maybe this letter could be done from the side of your parents. Uh, we also have not only bachelor and master education, but we do certified program, uh, which are run during the week during summer or winter, you know, we have a huge lake here and also the mountains. 
just uh, next to Geneva. That's why sometimes we do it as a retreat in the mountains or next to the lake. So we are inviting um, people from different areas like banking, finances, international relations, uh, trading, commodities, sport management, hotel tourism, and we can do a program during a week. So just I encourage you to check the website uh, very soon so that you guys know what we are offering this summer. And uh, like this, you can have a, a certain opinion of how we teach. For the moment, everything is done online. We are using a program called Zoom. And you can see here one of our professors talking to students. Uh, it's like the <coughs> webinar, but uh, a usual class that is done on everyday base so that students can follow uh, their program even until we are this month like on quarantine system but it doesn't stop us so we continue the study process we have live sessions um, videos and uh, all our students can upload their materials and assignments and we test them now uh, this is uh, a quick information about all the accreditations because they are quite different from the public universities uh, what we do here, we do change people mentality. Why? Because we think that uh, in the contemporary world, uh, people need to be very open-minded and very global. That's why when you g come to work in corporation, in institutions, you always have international environment. Almost uh, there are no cases when you have one nationality in the company. There are always in open space you have five six ten nationalities around you if you're working international corporations uh, if you want to start your own business also you have to think about other people mentality if they are coming from another regions turkey is a huge country so in one team you might ha might have people coming from east west uh, so you need to have skills how to manage this team and uh, this is what we do in this type of courses. Um, this is a, a bit about our cooperation because we do cooperate with our international partners like in Ukraine, Poland, uh, in uh, United States, uh, in Spain, in France. Uh, we have uh, lots of um, students coming from the Asian part of the world. So uh, big cooperation we have with Vietnam universities thanks to our professors and their networking. And uh, here I wanted to show you a few examples of uh, the company visit that we do for students, that we um, go with them to the companies uh, uh, and they see uh, how the real business world exists. There are a few articles that were published about our uh, MBA programs around the world. And uh, we also do webinars like that in order to show our product so that you feel uh, how it's going to be in the class plus more interaction involved with the professor and um, just uh, a lot of beautiful views inside and outside the companies and uh, I wanted to show you one article that was recently published uh, through um, Akar Media Partners in Turkish magazine. You may find uh, information in Turkish about our university as uh, my first background was from journalism. So I decided to share with you and thanks to our Turkish team, it was translated. In case you will have questions, please don't hesitate to contact either email, either WhatsApp, whatever you prefer. And we will be responding fastly. This is just uh, a map of uh, all our partners and campuses. So we are very global. In case you would like to choose other city than Geneva, we can help with that. And um, I thank you for the attention and for your time to be present. I'll check if you have already some questions that are related to our topic Okay. 
uh, how we can find these programs on the website. Yes, the website is uh, mentioned and also you can find uh, us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on uh, Instagram and join our groups. You will be receiving the most recent information. I see people here are thanking for the presentation. I was also happy to have you. Uh, we had almost uh, over 40 people and um, I'm very grateful that uh, most of them stayed alive <laughs> online. Thank you very much, Inna. Thank you to our partners and uh, I wish to everybody to have a nice evening. And I hope to see you all at the education fair in June. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.